न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायक It's a brand new day it's a brand new year and another brand new edition of face to face we'll come to the first edition of face to face for the year 2024 as always i am jaimal ratnayaka for the news first team it was the famous french author voltaire who once said with great power comes great responsibility and it was later memorialized through pop culture as well and tonight with me i have an individual who has been entrusted with great power and also great responsibility tonight in our studios we have with us minister harin fernando minister of tourism land and more recently sports and youth affairs as well a very good evening to you mr fernando good thank you for joining me on the good show evening. on the very first show of 2024 thank you for having me and i uh, wish a very prosperous new year to all the viewers in sri lanka it's going to be a year of change it's going to be a year of hope so let's hope it's going to be a good one it's going to be a year of change and a an year of hope let's start off with a sport that uh, has pride of place in sri lanka cricket i know you're the minister of sports and cricket is not the only sport here in sri lanka Absolutely. but cricket is more of a religion than a sport in sri lanka and unfortunately we have seen the decline in sri lanka cricket over the years since the late 2010s how sri lanka cricket was enjoying many successes but later on we declined and we are now in a situation where the icc has suspended sri lanka cricket although luckily we are able to compete in the international arena but this also poses an opportunity for you minister because this allows you to clean house absolutely this allows you to bring in a new sports law altogether and also to look at the sri lanka cricket constitution and to introduce and formulate new laws to ensure that we don't face such a decline in okay. the future so can you very click, quickly tell me because we have much to talk about very first uh, uh, tell me what the plans you have are for cricket and, and sports. sports overall yeah so um, a yeah, good question to start off with and i think yes you uh, correctly identified cricket is a religion but cricket is not only the sport in sri lanka we have 60 odd 66 or 70 odd sports Yes. that's registered in sri lanka mm. however cricket uh, has been the talking point because it is quite commercial it's it has been uh, what has taken us to the world stage so there was so much of interest after winning few world cups mm. few asia cups uh, but hypothetically i do not know jamal if you know this uh, in the year of 2023 mm. sri lanka is the country that has won the most second most amount of uh, matches mm. but Uh, consistency is an issue yes what we won which team we won against mm. it's not just the wins it's mm. how we play it's our attitude mm. it's how we how we face after a defeat mm. um i mean a sport you'll always win you'll always lose mm. but you keep a dignity and then and the sport and and it gives a huge um impact on the country as Certainly. well so yes. so these are things that uh, i am more worried to see what has happened over the period of time certain people Uh, disclose lots of corruption within mm. the management so so there is lots of a clean up that has to be done and like you said correctly again uh, I'm, i'm starting from a clean slate so it's it's quite easier for me to get this on the right track mm. and i i have a brief experience uh, doing so mm. uh, when i had a short stint of about an eight months which i did the right way of getting rid of a uh, corrupted person was so called and you corrupted. introduced a new sports corruption sports law, corruption law yes. and that's the that's the only can we are the only country mm. in asia not even pakistan not even india not even bangladesh mm. has it other than two foreign countries in europe i'm uh, um, probably British and the Australians have it other than yes. that nobody else has it so established cricket boards yeah so we we so i i personally feel mm. icc have a bit of respect for me when it comes to being able to change it right. and um, i think that's probably one of the reasons uh, president entrusted me on this job to get this fixed again and mm. get the ban out mm. so recently last week i went and met the icc officials mm. um on a brief meeting just for a few hours and i even met 
uh, the ACC president Jay Shah, who has been the talking point yes, right now. Yes, for but me. He's quite a quite a quite influential guy when mm. it comes to a country like Sri Lanka. You know, you need to. I mean. It, it's about balancing all of this and uh, you know getting the best for the Sri Lankan cricket we're because it borders on international relations absolutely. as well. Absolutely, and mm. we're a very small country. If you really look at it, this is this is what my biggest worry of cricket. Only about four million uh, people or population is among crickets in Sri Lanka. Mm. Because you see, after Sanjay Suri, nobody came from Mathura really, mm. and it's Gaul, Ambalangoda, Kalutara, Panadura, Moratua. Then comes Kalambo, a little bit of Battala, Jala, then Nigambo, mm. and that's it. And Kurunagal and Kandy will find uh, odd one or two players. You still haven't found a player from the province you used to represent, the exactly. Uwa province. Exactly. There's nobody from Uwa, Ampar, mm. Batiklo, Jaffna. Jaffna, there's one boy mm. who had come for LPL, which right. is good. Yes. So we, we are looking at, President has put up a 1.5 billion budget and mm. uh, headed by Siddharth Vetumuni and Arvind Di Silva to develop rural cricket mm. and wickets. Mm. You need proper wickets for boys to play and you can't be playing Madden cricket and then come and play on a turf. So turf, it's a, yes. So so quite a lot if you really think mm. Sri Lanka has to do. We are lucky to be where we are if you really think, if you right. really ask me because Sri Lankans are born talented cricketers because we inherited this from the British when they were living and I think that culture has developed over the period of time and um, there has been good but how many uh, top schools can afford this expensive sport because for a ground you have to pay a lot. We don't have enough grounds. Mm. Even in Colombo, schools like Isipatana school, like Columbini, they're good cricketers, mm. but they don't have a proper ground. Yes. And they have to hire a ground in SLC has a lot more to do and the government of Sri Lanka need to get that infrastructure right. Mm. All in all, <coughs> you have made some changes. Um, Sanjay Suri has taken over inside SLC and mm. uh, I heard from the boys. I mean, I have a great relationship with most of the cricketers, mm. uh, not in a personal manner, but yes. they've respected Certainly. me, I've respected them, so mm. we, they, they talk to me all of the time. And they, they start practice at 6.30 in the morning every day at Ketaram, and every day by 6.30, Sanjay Suri is standing there. Right. So this is, this is some, some is the so change So this is instilling really, discipline. Exactly. Mm. I mean, when you have too many foreign coaches also, we have a language barrier, to mm. be honest, and boys who come from rural areas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not the most favoured person when it comes to all Brit all foreign coaches. I mean, there should be a blend of their expertise yes. as well as some Sri Lankans being there because it's easy to communicate. Mm. And one thing I really have seen that I want to change in Sri Lanka cricket is there should be a psychologist and a mentor touring, being with them 24-7. Mm. Foreign countries, foreign sports people, because it, it's a... It's a ever evolving sport and mm. it takes a lot out of you, your family time, your commitments, your discipline, mm. your focus, your, the money that you get, how you spend it, all of that mm. matters. So, uh, um, I mean, if you see all blacks in rugby, they have a guy or two mm. traveling all the time. So, mm. even if you come to breakfast and sit down and your face is not right, mm. they'll know there's yes. something wrong with this guy yes. and then they'll talk to him and they'll get the best out of them. Sri Lankan cricket do not uh, I mean, I feel like they have not been the a professional of how we should be contesting. So you here. you brought up a very interesting point there. You spoke mm. of a psychologist, which mainly has to do with the attitude of the players. Correct. And if you take the Sri Lankan fan base, given the successes Sri Lanka cricket has enjoyed, whenever we fail to win a trophy or we fail miserably or lose a match by a considerable margin, we always have this habit of comparing yeah. one team to yeah. the other. But yeah. one must understand that this is modern day cricket, Correct. and cricket has evolved right. since the 1990s right. very much so right. but do you believe even the fan bases are somewhat living in the past when it comes to this or the players discipline has actually eroded both mm. I would say um, I mean you know nowadays there's quite a lot of keyboard warriors who will always have something to say okay but then again Sri Lankans have had defeats mm. and they've always backed their side but now it's different probably because of our boys discipline and the way they face the media or Yes. How, how casual they take a defeat. Mm. I mean, you know, the entire country sometimes when you when you have a match, yes, I, mean, I remember my dad used to not go to work, keep me yes. from not going to school. Certainly. And we both sit through the whole day. Now when I think about it, what a waste of time of cricket is <laughs> long. And I yeah. can't imagine. Yeah. I would have sat through the entire, the entire day. match, yes. So, but uh, yeah, having said that, that that's that's what's in us. That's, that's, that's the passion we have. That's the passion we have. But it's fast eroding. Mm. And I don't want to see that happening. So, 
players discipline the way they face the media i mean the um, you you need to take ownership even if you win or even if you lose mm. even if you do good or even if you do bad it is it is a quality a sportsman should have and i feel that uh, since of late one of the reasons that people are uh, falling off uh, the, the sri lankan cricket mm. is because they don't find that discipline amongst the players um which i'm i'm sure we can fix it's about guiding them and mm. these are young boys you know all of a sudden when they get money i mean you, you, i mean it look it could happen to me it could yes. happen to you yes. very easily so that's why we need proper mentors mm. uh who's always there who's always guiding them because even for them it's a short stint of uh, play yes and if they don't make the most of it they will ruin their lives Certainly. so so you you need to guide them so you're confident over the next 7 to 8 months that you can make at least i want to see the, i want to see the i want to see uh, the world cup one once we go to the 2020 world cup which is going to be played in usa and yes. cities which will favor us mm. yeah, west indies has always favored yes, us yes certainly ah uh, the wickets so i i hope the boys if they commit if they can be consistent mm. and with the, the new right selection committee as well and the selection committee mm. i am very very uh, certain they will do their best mm. because they young boys mm. and they just got out of cricket yes. so they know exactly they seen the players who have played and they played alongside mm. this was my whole reason that i was preferring yes. some young young set of people because uh, i mean it's easy to um get some legends to be the selectors but but the modern day cricket is very different they're freshly and retired they know the first class arena they, they know the first class arena mm. and they know the boys very well mm. they know the strengths and weaknesses they share the same changing yes. room mm. and also the players are confident to go and talk to them because they know them so yes. they're, they're, it's not like sir, sir you yes. so I, there is no gap there's no gap there's mm. no gap so i i feel that that will work for us so moving from cricket uh, it's 2024 and it's a leap year which means that this year we will be having the olympics in in uh, Paris France in June this year but given the situation in other sports uh, in Sri Lanka we I as far as I know none of our athletes have uh, qualified for the 2024 Olympics as of yet so what's your plan for that minister yes so so now you put Nabeko uh so, yeah. yes you put Nabeko yes he's in uh, Italy we mm. allowed him to stay there and mm. train and he will have to compete in few more competitions to be selected to the olympics right. so he's on on course on yes. that a few other athletes similarly mm. uh, we we are spending them to go around and and perform on this uh, different courses so that that's how they'll get the qualification, the qualification criteria will be fulfilled but i really believe mm. if sri lanka wants an olympic medal there are many other ways many right. sports how so that um, we can really work on art archery would be one because we um, shooting could be another mm. because um, i mean we, we've been through a 30 year war we have lots of veteran uh, people marksmen, who are yes. marksmen mm. so there's quite a lot that we need to promote mm. those sports if we are looking at an olympic medal mm. unfortunately one thing why i didn't really would like to take sports up uh, at one point mm. was that there are more issues on federations then with the uh, the players yes even recently um, you issued a gazette yes. writing dissolving several federations yes i mean i mean the, the, these federations are just there mm. to make sure that they go on a tour right just on a retirement plan and 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 there's no focus so mm. so right now we we are looking at a consultancy firm to see how we overall change the sport right how to identify things make it really professional mm. you know the ministry uh alone can do that right. this, this is what i believe i'm mean, a politician i mean, i at least like sports yes. if somebody else who didn't like sports would not know what 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 is happening Definitely, and, yeah. and and trying to make decisions uh for that sport on that from that ministry would mm. not work really well mm. so i think overall we need to have a look into this in a very professional manner and see i mean, I mean look at this we, we are an island nation there's so much of water bodies inside sri lanka yes. how many swimmers have we produced mm. how many rowers have we produced surfers. how many surfers have we produced mm. i mean we are a nation that's blessed with uh, so many stuff but we need to identify all of this so that's why i thought a consultancy firm coming through mm. identifying these sports Hmm. getting what the government should fund in right. and have the focus will change the entire dynamics very soon right so there are great plans great ambitions for the world of sports here in sri lanka let's hope uh, sincerely that uh, the minister is able to fulfill all of his aspirations moving on to your other portfolio tourism you took up tourism first uh, late last year and uh, that was a gargantuan task when you yeah. took it up when yeah. even the last tourist in sri lanka was leaving yeah. sri lanka and uh, you went on 
a, a very uh, big round of tours to promote Sri Lanka first in India and thereafter in countries uh, in Europe as well. How has that fared? Can you give me some highlights of 2023 oh, yeah, and just, the plan uh, for 2024? I, I get goosebumps when I think about it on the mm. first day that I went to work. I and mean, we sat down and what we had to do was to find fuel to find the tourists wherever they were stuck mm. to get them into the airport and uh, you know that was not a good feeling uh, to start Just off to with. start off with yes um, but then uh, first few trips that I took all I took on my own I didn't want to cost the government mm. and we did it on our own we had the functions only in our embassies mm. uh, but eventually by September <coughs> we got around uh, with a small strategy right and uh, the industry really helped mm. me industry really supported me from the start mm. because they i mean they were doomed mm. they had nothing and we all got together and we first went to india and we went to delhi hyderabad ahmedabad uh, chennai bangalore kochi and we went on on this huge tour and we took about 40 companies of sri lanka mm. and we really made an account of ourselves and 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 showed that the first thing was that to say that Sri Lanka was normal, right. that was a challenge because mm. we had a massive political crisis, yeah, 12 hour power bands. cuts, there are no fuel, so mm. who would want to come and get stuck in Sri Lanka? Definitely. So to convince them, uh, we had to go, we had to show our videos, we had to be very passionate, we spoke very well. I think they really loved us at that point mm. and the Indians really helped us. And there was a lady called Jyoti Maya, she was uh, the head of the entire Indian <coughs> Travel Association. Mm. And you know she she travelled everywhere with us, and she said she goes to a meeting and says, "Okay, put your hands up. Who's going to send ten people today and sign it up today?" Mm. And that's that's kind of passion that we had, and we we really mingled very well with them. And then we had a massive <coughs> this year, their entire travel association AGM, mm. because I believe uh, I always say seeing is believing, <coughs> so people need to come and see. There were lots of influencers that we brought into Sri Lanka just to show. That Sri Lanka is getting back to normal and it is and normal, safe, yes. and it is safe, and and the numbers prove for itself. I was targeting for this year 1.5. Uh, for la yesterday when I checked, it was 1.4 million seventy thousand. So right. So I, I think the highest there. number of tourists in a record year was 2.3 million in 2018. Million in 2018. Mm. That was our peak. <coughs> but I'm I'm quite certain uh, with all our plans. Uh, uh, what we're trying to do mm. next year, we will surpass that, and for sure. So my target is 2.5. Right. And <clears throat> but there should be a lot more things that has to add up to mm. Sri Lanka, and also this uh, 31st night that was just concluded just showed uh, the world that how the Asia's parting city is going to be Sri Lanka right. because our parties go on till five, six in the morning. Our mm. 31st nights go on till breakfast and have the Kiribati. Whereas Singapore stops at one, Bangkok stops at one. Malaysia stops at one, so I mean, they, 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 may, they, they may have a uh, different Slight culture of party, us, yes. but, but, but then to show that Sri Lanka is also on the map of this craziness, the entertainment, the entertainment industry is there, will, will help me develop Colombo into a city mm. of an uh, entertainment partying place because right now uh, all the tourists go out of Colombo. Yes. Colombo, they do not remain yes, in Colombo. Walks down south. <coughs> so mm. we have a huge plan of uh, changing the president. Uh, house okay uh, into a hotel we're right. going to change it the navy camp into a restaurant area right. and the entire lotus uh, road uh, like a mini clarky with all those warehouses converted so mm. next year you see all of those development coming in colombo right. um there's a quite a lot of casinos in colombo port yes. city is going to be developed mm. so that will uh, make uh, tourists whoever go out of colombo will be stop centralized in colombo in Colum for two days or mm. three days as well which will give us a big huge boost right now it's only the business travelers who stay here yes and and the casino travelers mm. who was coming from india and china mm. uh, all in all the numbers for for us uh, number one being india number two being russia number three being china is very good and then comes the european traditional markets of mm. us uh, <clears throat> but a key focus next time will be to get attract more high-end tourists mm. because uh, now sri lanka needs to we should not compare ourselves to a bangkok or a Vietnam or or a Thailand mm. and say they are cheap and we are we are very bit expensive but yes Sri Lanka is a different product altogether mm. what we have to offer is very very different 
the Ramayana trail will be a different experience. Mm. The ferry traveling for all pilgrimages mm. will be a different different aspect of looking into yes. it. We try to go into Japan and promote wellness tourism because that has a huge scope Market and you can, and potential you can also there. potential as and you can also charge them. And our low season, I would never say Sri Lanka is an off season destination, mm. but our low season is the season for Australia. We're trying to work with two airlines to have a direct flight. Okay. Other than Sri Lankan airlines to fly in to be low cost okay. so that uh, the surfers do can come in through because lots of Australians surf a lot mm. and their their hot spot is uh, Bali okay. and Thailand but they're tired so of we going there. So can tap into that market. Yeah, but they're tired. They, they only mm. go there. So, but yeah. they, I mean, they come to Sri Lanka. It's to change. They will definitely love Sri Lanka because there's so much to offer. It's just not the water, it's yes. adventure, mm. it's a culture, it's, it's the inheritance, people. the food, the mm. people. So I think Sri Lanka altogether, that's why our tagline is Sri Lanka, you'll come back for more. Mm. Why we did that also was 33% of Sri Lankan travelers are repeaters. Mm. So we went through this, uh, I mean, it was not my words, it is uh, Ogilvy, which is a yes. global company who came up with this campaign. And actually people love it. People who have come back, they say, you're absolutely right. We, we come back for Sri Lanka. Because right. So yeah, it, it resonates go. with them. Uh, absolutely. Mm. I mean, we, we haven't done a campaign for the last 15 years. Mm. Uh, incredible India is there, truly Malaysia yes. is Malaysia. Malaysia, truly. But Sri Lanka did not have, we kept on changing. I, I think land of land like no other was there. Yeah, so Sri Lanka. Yeah, so Sri Lanka mm. came in. But we want to stick to something yeah. that resonates okay. and that goes a long way mm. that we can build a campaign. Mm. So. So, I mean, when I say it, it might not just hit you. I mean, you might say, oh, this guy is calling it rubbish. But, but, but when the video footage is, um, the, the, the campaign mm. Ogilvy has done, mm. you watch it, you feel, op I mean, you're attracted to it. And That's you right. see, this is, this is absolutely right. Yeah. And the guy, so we're just starting our campaign. It's a massive campaign. Mm. We're doing it in um, five different areas. So China will go separate, Europe will go separate. Mm. So we're going to go market specific mm. and uh, do a promote do a, it in that promote sense. Promoting in that sense, and right. very soon you will see on trams, uh, trains in England, mm. China, mm. the word Sri Lanka will come back for more. So we're doing a proper campaign, and I'm right. quite hopeful that uh, things will turn good. And I honestly, to be honest, I'm I, I'm quite excited with that ministry, and uh, and, I, and I feel. We've done well. Right. We need a domestic uh, airline to operate Sri Lanka so that we can attract the high end. Mm. We're speaking with India for two helicopters mm. which can carry 21 seater helicopters so that you can go to Alla or you can go to uh, Nuralia mm. uh, to places where you don't can't even land a seaplane. True. Uh, so th I mean that's where the high end will quickly mm. start coming in. They'll spend. They'll spend if you, if you have the product. Yes. So, Trinco, you don't want to go by road, but you can easily you can fly. Easily go by so train, yes. Air Force and us, we are trying to work on something on a 40-seater mm. aircraft to right. schedule the aircraft uh, okay. air operation next year. And with all that happening, I think we will be so a lot of hot prospects for the tourism Absolutely. industry as and well. And need some more brands, mm. and I hope all these brands will keep coming. In. Unfortunately, we are coming towards the end of the show, but I must ask you now. We were talking about uh, Minister Harin Fernando from the lens of Minister Harin Fernando. Let's talk about the politician Harin Fernando, who was this vociferous, outspoken mm -hmm. character in the SJB, who sounded the first cry of the Aragalea saying, go to go home, who was clad in black, who was wearing a black, uh, black headband in Parliament, who made uh, very sentimental statements in Parliament that made the people rally around him. Yeah. But since Harin Fernando took on these ministries and crossed over to the government, those, those sentiments have died down. Well, and <laughs> we will all agree that corruption, yeah. fraud and corruption, Mr. Fernando, is the reason Sri Lanka is where we are. And even recently, we saw how substandard human immunoglobulin medicine was brought down Sri Lanka and administered to the people. Why is Harin Fernando silent on this? Has he gone soft or uh, what, what's the uh, reason for absolutely this? Absolutely not. Uh, see, my, my, whole, my whole idea about it was when we chanted to uh, for go to, to go home mm. we did this campaign i mean i was i mean i just went through a bypass open heart surgery mm. but within two weeks i got back to work mm. and uh, with, against my all my family's wishes mm. but i worked really hard and i had a lot of strategies inside parliament outside parliament right. i worked a lot with uh, my former leader Sajid Pahimadas, and he did believe me in everything mm. but unfortunately when we got the opportunity uh, to take just not ceased to, to take responsibility mm. I as a human and I as a person who loves challenges, mm. her, I mean, 
made a personal call mm. and uh, when my leader did not want to take a mm. challenge it really hurt me and mm. at that point i thought no it's my responsibility too mm. because i call go to go home but mm. the country was suffering the country came into a complete um uh, haraki and you uh, did not know what next to accept yes. that is and well and truly understood and the people and also rallied yeah, behind and then I, i i went home i mean couldn't mm. make the decision it was a hardest decision that i had to make mm. in my life uh, because i love it mm. and it is it was a part of me because yes. i created it mostly mm. uh getting the plans getting the logos talking to the people getting yes. them drilling around but um, i did not want to drag anybody else out of sjb mm. at that point because i don't want i didn't want to see sjb collapse mm. and uh, i only wanted to th- i only thought of myself and i thought you know i am responsible also for sri lanka falling off mm-hmm. uh, by creating this massive uh, uproar and i thought oh my god even that comes is coming through towards me also mm. so then i thought why not uh, accept something that you can do that that's why I specifically took tourism because that is a low hanging fruit yeah. and i thought that's how sri lanka could be revived and uh, i wanted manju to take over the foreign employment because that's the number one yes. um, foreign remittances earn and these two would be the only way if we fix mm. that sri lanka will be back to normal and mm. which honestly we both yes, certainly no one has any reservations yeah, about that but successful. unfortunately there are certain wrong doers yes, so in the government I, I, even to date i have never participated in a group meeting mm. that uh, is done by the government right uh, i i kept away from them i, I just but I some just, of the ministers that are implicated were in the cabinet with you are still are yes so, so the, at that particular point what what choices did we have and uh, i mean either were we going to just go for an election mm. just just in a situation like that or fix the country mm. and what i think uh, what rw or oh, sorry the president yes. has done in a very short period is remarkable because mm. in 15 months to get out of bankruptcy mm. it's tough yes. it's absolutely tough mm. that the vat i am not in favor I just at a meeting with the hotel association i mean the dmc yes. never was charged uh, vat so from 0 to 18 is massive yes. that this this is going to be a massive challenge for exactly. 2024 mm. because our rates are going to be high especially for local tourists local tourists and mm. the smaller because they cannot even claim the vat exactly back. and uh, that's going to have a huge impact mm. and already they have sold this mm. they sold the the prices for the next one year for the next year yes so so how are they going to come out so i am just doing the numbers and want to have mm. a one on one meeting with the president because this is an imf condition but you know part of me feels a part of this uh having imf makes us a disciplined nation mm. see uh president spoke about this in parliament and he explained this beautifully he said about thailand mm. how thailand was and how sri lanka was in the 1960s mm. and when thailand went bankrupt and then they went to an imf they became disciplined and today thailand is in a different state mm. six times higher than us mm. uh, when their gdp to their per capita mm. is compared to so we did something wrong over the period of time politicians kept on promising and giving things free mm. just to win elections you i mean to be a welfare state <laughs> we, i i think we can't be a welfare state in mm. most sri lanka is a beautiful island we, we we have so much of capacity but discipline also has to be there mm. so overall it might be tough times in the first two years but if people get used to it they'll know how to earn more to mm. cover up what they're paying right so the the thinking all have to change so i think right. on, on a longer term any leader who's coming if it's not i'll look at again next time mm. even if it's a pain the sound of comedy saying that they cannot push us back to a welfare state but in the longer state. term once your job is done will harin fernando go back to being that outspoken <coughs> character in parliament who calls for justice for the easter attack victims oh, oh, who oh, calls oh, a spade a spade oh, of course i mean even today uh my, my stand has never changed mm. it's, it's just that right now uh bit focused on on what's on my hand yes. and what, what, what's to deliver mm. because if, if you get mixed up with uh, trying to be that person mm. and trying to do this both you won't be able you to get either right, one of them either done, one of them done. Okay. so i just want to make sure i said this right mm. uh and if i am lucky enough to be again in government after the presidential election or oh, then i will be a very different person right. of going for justice going for what you have to do right now is on a short term mm. fixing what's lost and then so very quickly person. before we wrap up is harin fernando confident of making it into the next parliament yeah oh personally i am i'm i'm, I'm never fear elections because i'm i honestly also be always believe that i i walk the talk and mm. i also 
I'm very, very uh, close to people and mm. I do not want to uh, fool them. And mm. I do not want to stay in politics for long. I'm 44, but I'm, I'm, I'm even willing to let go after 50 because I sometimes feel you need to live life, no, otherwise you just become a... Target, without <laughs> drowning in it. Drowning in mm. it, and then you don't have a life, and you uh, die off, yes. uh, being, having done nothing, and people will hate you for being mm. there for too long. But at the end of the day, your conscience is clear. My conscience is clear. So I hope uh, to do one more term, and... Uh, do Sit do back justice. and relax yes. later on. Um, hang, out, hang out with my dogs. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you very much, uh, Minister Harin Fernando, for joining me on the first edition of Face to Face for 2024. We were joined by Minister Harin Fernando, Minister of Tourism, Land, Sports and Youth Affairs. We wish you all the very best in all of the endeavours that Thank you have planned for 2024. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for Face to Face tonight. Do have a great night and an amazing year ahead.